Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardware news recap for the week. In this one, we'll be talking about AMD's Zen 3. Specifically, that AMD has noted it's on track for 2020. AlphaCool has a new gigantic radiator at 1260 millimeters, so we'll be talking about that as well. The RTX 3000 series production rumors that have been out there, especially as discussed by Igor's lab and Igor over there. Cyberpunk 2077 delays, AMD announcing XT CPUs for the 3000 series and the new A series chipset that's coming out, succeeding the A320 chipset previously, and a couple of other things like Intel's uh, Cooper Lake CPUs and Sapphire Rapids. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and our brand new Gamers Nexus wireframe mouse mat. Aside from being the best way to directly support our long form investigative reporting, you can also get a custom made high quality mouse mat made with a high detail 3D design that we created to show off heat sinks, coolers, video cards, and more. The mouse mat uses a stitched blue border for added longevity, a blue rubber underside for unique flair, and a microfiber cloth for smooth tracking. The mat is 36 inches by 12 inches and fits a keyboard and mouse easily. We sold out of the first run in 48 hours, but have more getting made right now. To backorder your mouse mat and ensure you get one in the next run, go to store.gamersnexus.net and backorder yours while reducing our reliance on advertisers, or click the link in the description below. So first up, a quick GN item. We just released this poster. This is an X570 Metro diagram, so we've taken some inspiration from Subway, Metro, underground maps from around the world, and we've put together a, an educational diagram on the X570 chipset and its related CPUs. And it's really ultimately an IO diagram showing the branch off point. So you have different uh, stations that you depart at and it kind of helps illustrate the PCIe layout, USB layout, uh, memories in there as well. And we just announced this during our stream that was probably yesterday at the time this video goes up. So don't know how many will be in stock at this point, if any, but uh, this is not intended to be limited in the truest sense, but it's limited by nature in that it's X570, it's based on a product that obviously has a lifespan, so we're not going to make them forever. We'll probably do a couple runs and then call it there. But anyway, it's on store.gamersnexus.net if you want to pick it up. And uh, actually, quick shout out to Wendell from Level 1 Techs, who provided us with a lot of help during the process of checking accuracy on this diagram. So obviously, we had to take some artistic liberties in a few places because it's really hard to illustrate a PCIe subsystem layout in a subway map. But Andrew did a great job making it work, and Wendell helped us out a lot along the way. So big, big thanks to Wendell from Level 1 Techs. You should subscribe to them if you're not. But if you want to pick up this poster, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net. And if it's out of stock, then we're probably going to do at least one more run, and we'll announce it in a news video as soon as we restock it. A quick extra note, too. We have another of the educational series of posters on the site, and that's the GPU Anatomy poster, which has, the, it has VRMs like MOSFET inductors, capacitors, and uh, shunt resistors, GPU itself, all that stuff's labeled on there. So if you want something that's cool looking, but also has some technical information, maybe educational, if uh, you're learning about all this stuff, then that's on the site as well. Okay, first news item, AMD confirming Zen 3 is still on track for 2020. The hardware enthusiast space was lit aflame with a, a rush of articles after one published by Digitimes previously, and which was translated by a Twitter user who is known as retired engineer in the space. And the article stated that AMD would be delaying its much anticipated Zen 3 CPUs. To my memory, we didn't cover this one because there wasn't enough to go off of. But uh, we're covering it now because AMD has basically dismissed it. So this gave traction initially the article that AMD's Ryzen 3000 series CPUs would be the last ones out until 2021, uh, barring the obvious upcoming XT launch. But AMD wasted no time in squashing the rumors and stated the following to Gamers Nexus, quote, AMD confirms that the delay on Zen 3 is inaccurate. AMD also reaffirmed to us that Zen 3 is on track for a launch this year. Exactly when this year, we're not sure. Computex 2020 would have been a safe bet originally, well, after the initial delay, but that's now off. That's been canceled as of last week. So at this point, we're likely looking at AMD hosting its own event somewhere or sometime later this summer or towards the uh, beginning of fall. And whether that's online or in person, we'll obviously find out. But Zen 3 is on track for 2020. Next news item, AlphaCool's big ass radiator. Unfortunately, that's not the actual name for it, but AlphaCool, we're offering you this name for free. You can take it. 
We don't need royalties for you to call your radiator the big ass radiator because frankly, that's what it is. So this is a 1260 millimeter radiator. We've got some shots we can throw up of the, uh, the water cool variant of this, which is known as the Mora 3. The Mora 3 has been a lot of fun to work with. It's entirely impractical for almost all system builds, but really fun to work with. We've used it for a lot of overclocking streams and it can run passively up to a pretty high wattage just without any fans because it's got so much water in the tank. So Alpha Cool is challenging that market. If you were looking at the Mora 3, then the Alpha Cool Next XX OS, it's got three Xs. And as we discussed a couple weeks ago, Xs are actually the most expensive letter to print. So the screen costs a lot more for an X or a K, which is why X and K branded products always cost so much. It's just they're really rare letters. And uh, yeah, so I mean, that's it has three. So that's probably going to mean it's pretty expensive. Actually, it's not too bad, though. It's 140 euros for the 1260 mil rad. You will need to buy fans for it, though, and that's going to probably cost similarly because you'll need either four 200 mils for one side, that is, or you could go with nine 140 mil fans. The Alpha Cool 1260 mil radiator measures at 400 by 400 by 45 millimeters in size. It is entirely made out of copper for the tanks, the channels, and the fins. The radiator notes 12 fins per inch for density, which should mean that it isn't too dense to accommodate successfully four 200 mil fans, at least on one side. Alternatively, again, nine 140 mil fans, or it could be run passively at lower heat loads. The company announced a 560 mil radiator and a 200 mil radiator as well. The latter of these, the 200 millimeter radiator, could be interesting to go alongside our coverage of Cooler Masters 200 mil CLC that we reviewed previously. It was a prototype at the time. I don't think that Cooler Master has come to market with that product, so we'd be interested to look at Alpha Cools if theirs is coming out. Next one, rumors about the RTX 3000 series. As we mentioned last week, the alleged coolers for the RTX 3000 series cards that we've seen online lately are likely only one or two of a few different prototypes that NVIDIA has in flight. NVIDIA and its partners that manufacture coolers will often prototype a couple different designs at least for the new cards coming out. So we may or may not see the ones come to market that have been leaked so far, but it still led to some really interesting and fun discussion about what's possible. So according to some new information, the coolers are rumored to be one of two types that NVIDIA is actively evaluating, allegedly anyway. And the other alleged cooler prototype, which we have yet to see, is supposedly manufactured by a different OEM that NVIDIA has a longer working relationship with and some previous experience working with. So the supposed Founders Edition cooler that we discussed last week is rumored to cost NVIDIA as much as $150. And while that's an educated guess, it may not be too far off base. The cooling design has multiple fin stacks, at least four heat pipes, and a custom vapor chamber. It's also weird, which always raises the price. As Igor from Igor's Lab points out, this all points to NVIDIA being in the potentially DVT stage with consumer-facing Ampere cards. Just to note our own experience and discussion with manufacturers who make video card cooling products, typically at the higher end, you'll see coolers costing $50 to really max about $70 for the manufacturer. So that's not consumer cost. Obviously cost gets passed on to the consumer and then you pay some form of markup because that's, I mean, that's how it works. They got to make money. So $50 is typically something you'd see for, let's say like a Strix, an FTW, a Gaming X type card. Then you start increasing that once you get into the fancier stuff and things like KP or the Galax HOF cards, those are a different story entirely. So uh, Igor suggests that based on the past releases from Nvidia and AMD, he thinks the current timetable for Ampere would be August for a potential launch or volume production with a launch by September. And uh, we always offer these rumors with a necessary amount of skepticism. That said, Igor is typically pretty accurate. He is a source in the industry we respect. So we'd be more likely to uh, potentially agree with his his conclusions based on the information that we have so far. Next up, Cyberpunk 2077 delayed to November. Much to the chagrin of the gaming community, Cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed once again. This second delay follows the first delay announced back in January, and that moved the original release window from April to September 17th. Now that date has been extended to November 19th. As with the first delay, it's hit a Project Red, cites the need for additional time to polish the game, as well as needing to, quote, properly go through everything 
balance game mechanics, and fix a lot of bugs. So CDPR also notes that the game is technically finished, both content-wise and gameplay-wise. CD Projekt Red is also promising that we'll soon hear the opinions of game industry reporters from an event that the company has scheduled for June 25th. And for our own opinions here, it's a, a good thing to delay a product until it's actually ready. So if they really think it's not ready, definitely better to delay it and launch it properly because you really only get one first impression with these things. And that first impression, although not always, will typically follow the game through its life. There are a couple of obvious deviations from this. CSGO, as an example, was revived pretty strongly. Final Fantasy's MMORPG saw an initial uh, poor reception and then recovered somewhat miraculously. So there are deviations from it, but it's good to delay. Now, another uh, potential reason for this that we've seen is to line up with maybe console releases. So there could be a market or business reason as well. AMD announces Ryzen 3000 X T-Series CPUs, B550 availability finally, and the new chipset, the A520s chipset. So this confirms rumors that have been swirling the rumor toilet for the last few weeks, which are that AMD has been working on XT series refreshes of its original 3000 series CPUs. So these SKUs will include the Ryzen 5 3600 XT, the Ryzen 7 3800 XT, and the R9 3900 XT. All will carry the XT branding. They are essentially, what the T means is that they've boosted the frequency a little bit more. So this isn't an architectural change, but it's a, a frequency bump refresh. And with the XT line, AMD is offering an extra 100 to 200 megahertz of boost on the single core frequencies. So AMD is calling this an optimized seven nanometer manufacturing process as the reasoning for that boost in frequency. Exactly what's been optimized on TSMC's seven nanometer process isn't clear yet, but we'll see if we can ask around and find out. The XT models will retain virtually everything from their X counterparts. So that'd be TDPs, which is sort of a made up BS number that AMD uses to reverse engineer backwards towards an Intel similar number, but we have a separate video on that. So TDPs, cache configurations, core and thread counts, PCIe Gen 4 lanes are the same, all that stuff. So it's really just frequency here. And then there is a bit of a cooler change too. So AMD's purpose is to offer more aggressive single threaded performance specifically. They're looking for higher performance in non-completely thread bound applications where AMD is already doing well in those. So this is a counter to Intel's Comet Lake S CPUs that have just recently come out in the 10 series. And regarding single threaded performance, AMD is claiming an improvement of 4% over standard Ryzen 3000 models. AMD's XT models are expected to land on July 7th, which would be the one year anniversary of Ryzen 3000. The XT models carry the same pricing as the vanilla Ryzen 3000 variants. So that'd be $499 or $500 for the 3900 XT, $400 for the 3800 XT, and $250 for the 3600 XT. As usual, the actual prices will vary a little bit. And also note that although this sounds like a just a drop in replacement, it's really a drop in replacement for the previous pricing because now those CPUs have all dropped in price somewhat significantly in some instances. So you may still be better off buying the non-XT, but we'll look into them. Uh, in addition to the new XT branding, AMD is shipping the 3800 XT and the 3900 XT specifically without coolers this time, which we think is probably the right move because we recommend coolers for CPUs in general, like aftermarket coolers. Not always, but in most instances, given our audience, given our focus, that's kind of what we recommend, uh, especially with these higher end ones. So don't really see this as a bad thing if it means that the price goes down and the waste goes down as well. This follows a trend that Intel set a long time ago with its own enthusiast parts, where it just stopped shipping stock coolers with them because it was pointless. So the 3600 XT will retain a stock cooler. That's going to be the Wraith Spire. And then AMD is formally recommending 280 mil CLCs for the higher end CPUs or air cooler equivalents. And we have some pretty in-depth cooler testing if you want to see what those would be. And the also announced availability of the B550 chipset and motherboards. Those have been out for a couple of days now. And the A520 chipset. A520 is supposed to be a replacement of A320. We don't know a whole lot about its in detail specs yet. AMD says it has 40 designs in the works with motherboard partners and its availability is tentatively targeted for August. And finally, AMD announced its redesigned Store MI software. So back in April, we noted that AMD was discontinuing Store MI and would be launching a, uh, a replacement for second quarter, which is now here. So AMD highlights Store MI 2.0 has a new UI. It's got a new caching-based acceleration algorithm, and it expects more news to be ready 
when AMD is ready to talk more about Zen 3. Intel announcing Cooper Lake and then there's Sapphire Rapids as well to talk about. Intel has had its own CPU announcement this past week. It finally pulled the curtain back on what it's calling the third gen Xeon scalable processors. While Intel's third gen, or any of its recent generations for that matter, is a bit puzzling for its naming, we all know this line as Cooper Lake. Ice Lake will be aimed at 1P and 2P deployments. Cooper Lake will serve as the 4P and 8P market deployment. Intel's Cooper Lake family will offer 11 SKUs initially, topping out at 28 cores and 56 threads. Mysteriously absent from Intel's announcement was the 56 core. These are MCM-based chips that Intel announced would be part of the Cooper Lake family almost a year ago. Paul Alcorn from Tom's Hardware noticed this as well and has reached out to Intel for an update on those chips. There are a few noteworthy things Intel is bringing to the table with Cooper Lake perhaps the most notable, being BF16 support. Intel is adding support for BF16 instructions to the ABX512 instruction set, which will accelerate certain AI workloads. Cooper Lake will also see increased memory support in the form of support for DDR4 data rates at 3200 megatransfers per second, as well as support for Intel's second generation of Optane persistent memory DIMMs. Cooper Lake is also getting six UPI links up from three on Cascade Lake. For the CPUs themselves, they carry familiar Xeon Platinum and Gold branding and slot into the LGA4189 P5 socket. TDPs range from 150 to 250 watts. Cooper Lake is based on the Cedar Island platform and uses the C620A chipset, which still supports PCIe Gen 3. Intel's recent statements also included information on Sapphire Rapids, noting that it should arrive in 2021 and that it will help deal with the market that's currently split by other Intel offerings. Sapphire Rapids has been rumored to bring support for DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5 and will be the CPU of choice for the ARNL Aurora supercomputer. Next up, for the first time since getting into pre-builds, Corsair is now offering an A prefix SKU for its Corsair 1 systems, and that will designate AMD Ryzen CPU options. So uh, this is with 3000 CPU configurations, well, as in Ryzen 3000, not literally 3000 SKUs. Corsair has listed the A100 as an option for the 3900X non-T, uh, the 3950X CPU as well is in there. And then Ryzen 3000 offering SKUs can be paired with the 2080, 2080 Super, 2080 Ti for GPUs. Corsair's one line is a small form factor PC, so there's a mysterious yet unnamed mini ITX motherboard hidden in there somewhere. Naturally, there's also a slew of Corsair branded products for memory, the power supply, and the storage, because Corsair is trying to do that new buzzword thing where they make an ecosystem and then build a computer with it. The Corsair 1 A100 also runs liquid cooling for the CPU and the GPU, although we haven't tested the thermals on any of these systems previously. Corsair also announced its newest line of pre-built, the Corsair Vengeance A4100, the i4200, and those are in the Vengeance line, so Corsair is offering both Intel and AMD options. The Vengeance 4100 will run AMD's Ryzen 3700X CPU, while the i4200 will run the Intel i7-10700KF. And remember, the F isn't the button that you push for respects here. It's a designator that means no IGP, which for a pre-built PC is probably fine because it's known what GPU it's going to come with. Finally, for Western Digital's class action lawsuit, there is a brief update on the ongoing SMR saga. We recently reported on how the entire hard drive triumvirate, WD, Seagate, and Toshiba, have been to varying degrees selling hard drives with SMR technology and not being wholly upfront about it. Western Digital has come out the worst offender, primarily due to the fact that it seemingly tried to hide SMR within its NAS product stack. For that reason alone, WD has found itself the target of a class action lawsuit, both in the US and Canada. The lawsuit here in the States is being headed up by the firm Haddis and Lucas and takes aim at Western Digital's WD Redline for what is essentially false advertising. The original suit only named one plaintiff, but now it has been amended to include five new plaintiffs, bringing the total to six. Ars Technica points out the following, quote, what makes Haddis and Lucas's class action suit against Western Digital interesting is that the firm isn't just looking for money. It's looking for a permanent injunction barring Western Digital from advertising SMR drives as appropriate for NAS devices or RAID in any way. In fact, this appears to be the major relief sought by the suit as 
It also states its plaintiffs are not currently seeking damages, merely reimbursement and attorney's fees, and that's from Ars Technica. This case obviously has huge implications for the storage industry and the future of SMR. No doubt Toshiba and Seagate are paying close attention. We're going to cut it there for time. There's one extra bonus story about Nintendo litigation that's in the uh, show notes document below, which also contains all the sources for the stories for the week. And you can read about that one there if you want to click on that and check it out. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly and help pay for what we do here and get something cool in return like the new X570 chipset Metro poster. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.